Anyway, we're back in the building, about to get it in. We got a lot to get into tonight. We wasn't here last week. We got a lot to make up for. And there's a couple of stories that y'all ain't going to want to miss. We wasn't here to talk about Jay-Z getting that ass kicked. We wasn't talking about Michael Sam getting that ass kissed. We about to talk about that and a whole lot more. And yo, did the elected official call the president of the United States the N-word on on the air? It's a lot to get into, y'all. And we're going to get into it tonight. We got a full crew and a great show. We live. Ain't no has to have a Marcus J is right now. Open your ears, strap on your thinking cap, socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week. It's time for Ain't No Half Steppin' with Marcus J. Sellers has Jordan, Jordan with two seconds to go, puts it up, it's good at the buzzer, Michael Jordan has put it for Chicago. Manning, lobs it, Burris alone! If they lying, they must be half stepping. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J is live. We back in the building, y'all. We wasn't here last week, but we live tonight. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J live from the Dan Alexi and Net Radio. Be down with us tonight at 804-402-2893. Be down with the flagship show. Of Legacy Internet Radio. Ain't on Hashtag with Marcus J. We appreciate everybody that is listening to us. We see you out there on MixLR. We see you hanging out with us on TuneIn. We see you listening to us through LegacyInternetRadio.com, Stream Licensing, and all of our affiliates. We appreciate it. We are the flagship show, Legacy Internet Radio. We're sponsored by Live Action Captions. We are sponsored by Free Spirit Enterprises and the Doctor of Optometry, Dr. Euphemia Huggins Williams ODPC. You'll hear those spots later on throughout the show. But at this time, I am very, very, very excited to go around the room and introduce the folks that I have with me tonight. Uh, my sister SY is not with us. Uh, we want to send her some love. She's under the weather. And so throughout the show tonight, we're going to be sending her love. And we want our listeners and we want our fans of the show to keep her in your prayers. If you are a praying person, keep her in your thoughts. If you think and keep her close to your heart our sister s why hopefully she's listening to us tonight and if she is she will draw strength for us here thinking about her live from the dana legacy and at radio of course uh as we go around the room with the crew we got a couple of folks in here i want to introduce them this brother right here i i love him it's my brother you hear him every single tuesday night on in live and radio along with his crew you've got the man himself mr lp the Tour, Mr. LP Steven Sykes. What's up, brother? Hey, how you doing? Good to be here. Good to be here. It's good to have you, man. Thank you, you. you doing? I see you got your Legacy in that Radio T-shirt over there. You repping for the crew. I got a you repping, you repping, you repping for the crew. Do we get a dollar? We get a dollar. <laughs> what the hell? You want to ask for a dollar because you in here repping your, you repping, you repping your company, you repping your business. Hey, you usually get a free lunch or a dollar oh, or something. Good, you know? yes, man. <laughs> you, 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 you doing all right, Mr. Actor? I am exhausted, but I'm pushing through and just keeping on. Rolling. And I've been calling you the Actor. Why don't you tell the ain't no has to have on Marcus J listeners why I'm calling you the Actor? Uh, we just did our opening night uh, yesterday at the Heroico Theater uh, for Raw Talks Entertainments when Love is. Is not enough. I played Ike Smith, uh, the father of my daughter who got turned up doing a play, and I let him have it doing the show. 
That's my brother. Well, it's good to have you. We'll have you for a good portion of the show tonight, and we thank you. Of course, you heard her just a few minutes ago helping us out with the intro. You got my sister. She is back in the building. We haven't seen her or heard from her in quite a while, but we got her here tonight, and we're very happy and proud to have Miss Tony in the building. Hello. What's up, girl? Not too much. And you are also repping your Legacy Internet Radio, ain't no half step with Marcus J T shirt as yes, well, as well up in here. What's going on? I, see, I'm loving it. Uh, you know, this actually my Legacy Legacy Internet Radio T shirts are in heavy rotation. You know, when you I'm be outside of joints? work, yeah, I love it. They're they're comfortable. You know, of course, it's always great advertising. Um, but I often get people ask, "What is that?" You know, but it, I I just love them. They're you know, of course, I got on my red tonight with my name on the back, Miss Tony. Um, but yeah, I love them. They're they're seriously, seriously heavy rotation. Well, I appreciate that you're wearing it. We appreciate that you have it in heavy rotation, and people who see you with it, you get an opportunity to tell folks about Legacy Internet Radio and Ain't No Half Step on Marcus J and other the other great shows that we have here six days a week here on the mobile app tune in in any place else that you can find us there's a lot of places you can find us if i sat here and try to go through them all we would take up the whole damn show but definitely glad to have you it's good to have you back you look good we appreciate it and uh you ready to rock and roll we're gonna say some I craziness am. tonight because you, you're, you're in a good mood to I say am. some craziness all right it's like it's been forever since i've been it's, it's been a little while because last week was your spot but we had a replay last week yes and so yes. you know we were blessed to have you join us tonight instead of last week and so you know it, it is what it is so i'm ready to rock and roll one of the things that actually before we go further 804-402-2893 is the number to dial to be down with us here at the flagship show lexi and that radio some of the stuff we're going to get into tonight we want to hear from you on social media so whether you call us up or whether you hit us up in social media, we need to get your opinion. So holler at us. First thing we're going to get to, y'all, we got to talk about Jay-Z and Beyonce as large. We, we just got to talk about it. We wasn't here last week. I did a replay, um, and I did some social commentary along with some old shows. So I did have an opinion on it. My opinion has somewhat evolved since I had some words last week. Uh, and let me just reset it for those people who have literally, literally been living on Pluto. Because even people on Mars know about this story. I can't say Mars. I can't say Venus. The two closest neighbors in the outer world. It has to be Pluto. Absolutely. You have to have been living on Pluto to not know this story. Um, and so here's what we know. We know that Jay-Z and Beyonce and various bodyguards got on an elevator. And in the surveillance video, it was, which lasted somewhere in the neighborhood of about three minutes, give or take a couple of minutes on either side, uh, you see Solange giving Jay-Z the verbal assault. And then she starts giving him the physical assault. She starts punching and kicking and all of that kind of stuff. And Jay-Z does not respond. Uh, he looks like he's trying to defend himself. But... Uh, a bodyguard gets in between him and Solange, keeps him from having to, you know, physically defend himself. At one point, when she kicks at him, she gra he grabs her leg, you know, kind of like in a defense mechanism, but not in a way where it looks like he's trying to do anything to her. Solange, of course, is the younger sister of Beyonce, which makes her Jay-Z's sister-in-law now uh, i've set it up in a very professional way let's cut the bullshit and just have some fun with it jay-z kind of got his ass whooped y'all but i said this is social media tony Solange better be lucky that his name is jay-z and not chris brown or mike tyson because the yeah. truth of the matter is yeah. he acted in a way in my opinion was appropriate for what the situation was whether there was cameras there or not but I'm not sure that I would blame someone for putting her down the way she was coming at him. You know, and he actually didn't do much to even restrain her. I mean, he more so kind of kept stepping back. I think the, the kick at the end was kind of the most reaction that um, he that I saw him him give her. But, yeah, definitely. I think if it was anybody else, I mean, they might have, I don't know, like grabbed her hands and hit herself or something. But she, he handled it extremely well. I don't know, maybe he was really drunk 
or high. Maybe she was drunk or high. Why we got to put it on him? No, I'm saying I'm talking about his reaction. Now, her, I honestly why we got to assume that he was the one that was under the influence. I'm just saying because he was so like just. Maybe he knew that she was drunk or high. Because he was so unreal. But still, like you're not gonna let somebody just like wail on you yeah but your natural instinct i could tell you as a guy my natural instinct when i got a chick coming at me like that is to re i mean i had literally his response is exactly how i would expect to see a man respond you know what i mean now i'm not i'm not saying that you know it's okay to put your hands on a woman i'm not saying that anybody that knows me knows i got a daughter i got a wife i got a mother and a sister and and girlfriends that are friends of mine so i'm obviously not endorsing putting a lady down but i can't say that i would have blamed him if he had done that the way she was coming at him i'm just saying that i would not have done that especially when there's people there that can help me deflect the situation and the other thing is we live in a world tony where there's cameras everywhere yeah. and you know that he knew that there was a camera there and so if he had punched her in his in her mouth we would be talking about how Jay-Z is the worst man in America right now. Would you agree or disagree? I disagree, and um, I don't know if you heard about Whoopi Goldberg's comments and how much you know flack she caught for that, but that's something that my mother taught me at a very young age. If you hit a man, expect to be hit back. And, you know, men are humans. They have emotions just like we do. They also have that fight or flight reaction just like we do. And you can't expect them to be, you know, like I'll say, quote unquote, godlike and just, oh, you know, this is a woman. I can't strike back. Again, you hit a man, he had the right to hit her back, but he chose not to. So I commend him for that. But yeah, I mean, she was going off. No, nah, I'm glad you brought up the Whoopi Goldberg uh, comment. She said this on The View last week. I'm getting this from News1.com. She said, quote, hey, I know everyone is freaking out like I said they would when I said if someone hits you, you had the right to hit them back. I didn't say Jay-Z should have hit Solange. She said, I said, if you hit a man, that man has the right to hit you back. That's what I said. I stand by that. If you hit anybody, mm -hmm. they have the right to hit you back. This idea that men aren't supposed to hit women, if you slap a man, he has the right to slap you back. Now, not everyone is going to agree, and I'm okay with that, but that's how I feel. That's why I don't slap anybody. And quote, Mr. LP, how you feel about Whoopi Goldberg's statement? How do you feel about the whole thing? Uh, completely you know kind of I, I haven't heard anything from you i haven't seen anything in social media i saying you didn't put anything out but i haven't seen anything from so in social media from you about this situation i i have to admit i have been somewhat out of touch since we did do a replay last week jump in here man what you got uh the people at the canes uh film festival supported uh bring back our girls um <laughs> I, i've been uh facetiously and sarcastically um modest with that but uh the way i see it about this my grandmother you see two different schools of thoughts you'll see a lot of older people especially our mothers and grandparents who uh our parents and grandparents excuse me who said you know the same thing what you alluded to miss tony uh but you see the younger people who are now we are all involved in mental health and all these other different things that previously they were not privy to so this new school of thought is, hey, take a step back, what have you. As far as Miss Whoopi's Goldberg's comments, I, I'm on the fence. I agree with her on a lot of those different things. Me personally, I'm not so sure I would have done it, uh, um, hit somebody back. I've been in situations where women just mad for whatever reason just start coming at you. Um, from my understanding, what caused it was just some disagreement, and he got up in her face smart time and went on from there. I don't think that they were focusing on the camera because they reacted that way i'm disturbed by miss beyonce's stance on it and how they went about it but you know they they put out a statement this is family we go through things like everybody else and kept on moving but there's more to this story and i know there's more to this story but they're going to keep it under wraps for now so i agree there's more to a story i agree that they're going to keep it under wraps 
But my response to that is they need to. It's their business, their family business. Um, I almost feel a little bit embarrassed even talking about this because we're talking about somebody's business. We're talking about somebody's family business. We all have families. We all have family business. We do realize that the rules are a little bit different when you're in the limelight, when you're famous, or when you are on television, when you have concert tours that expect us to spend $500 to sit in the front row. We do realize that the rule, the rules are a little bit different and you know we can see the good with you but we also are allowed to see the bad with you so yeah the ru- the rules are a little bit different but i'll be honest with you man i don't know that i ever want to see anybody at their lowest possible moment and you can say anything you want about jay-z's reaction to it you can say anything you want about beyonce's lack of reaction to it but the truth of the matter is solange had a moment that i'm sure she does not want to relive knowing that it was on camera and the whole world so it, nobody wants to be seen in a out of control kind of way and she was absolutely tony she was out of control she was she she was out of control but she's always been going she's been known to that's not the first time she's lashed out verbally on people and that i don't think it's not verbally though well, steven it's not the same no but she's uh, okay privately there's been of attacks because she's had previous health issues or mental and uh, other issues in the past that she's spoken about publicly. So that's the only reason why I bring it up. She's spoken about her drug problems and her mental health problems she's had trouble with in the past. So she's overcome that. And she has no problem saying, hey, this is it. Also verbally. Now, right. granted, it's differently, but it's been some very tongue lashing where like, whoa, even at your lowest moment, you don't want to be saying this crap on TV. But she's had no problems admitting to it now so. we're getting a couple of hits from our family in mixl on social media uh first our sister joy who listens to us every single week our sister joy what's up joy she said this whole situation is bananas i absolutely agree with that but we're also getting a hit from my brother said what up bro said says and tony i want your opinion on this nicely timed for their tour that's coming up this summer now interesting take on it. i don't know if said meant it to be quite as sinister as i took it but i'm gonna go there i'm gonna suggest that maybe this was a ploy to get us so interested in jay-z and beyonce and solange maybe we do want to see what's going on with them maybe we do want to go to their tour to see if they'll show up in said arena in a harmonious type of way as opposed to you know, Jay Z out there singing, you know, his hook on Crazy in Love and Solange run out there, you know, with a with a with a twenty two caliber handgun trying to shoot his ass on the stage. Like I'm clowning but but real talk. Yeah. I mean, what do you think? Um, no, because neither Jay Z nor Beyonce need any additional hype. I mean, they are Jay Z and Beyonce. I mean, she just what she made what two hundred million off of her tour that she just did. I mean, and he's been around forever. They they don't need that type of um, attention for anybody to hype them up. And I mean, the fact that they're going on tour together, that's enough. The ticket's gonna be sold out. Period. Um, to me, I don't think that it's that you know the whole conspiracy theory or anything like that. At the end of the day, they're people, just like everybody else. Um, you know, they have the darkness in their family. They have issues. Although Jay Z and Beyonce make songs together, their relationship is not perfect. Right. Nobody's relationship is perfect. Right. Um, and for me, you know, I thought about the whole situation. Maybe something you know that happened that night may have set Solange off. But to me, I, I just felt like it was kind of like a buildup of things and whatever happened that night pushed her over the edge. And the fact that Beyonce didn't really react kind of to me said volumes about the relationship between not only her and Solange, but also the relationship between her and Jay-Z. The way I took that, I'm sorry, Stephen. No, so I, I uh, was going to allude to that as well, that it speaks a lot considering how close they were even before she was in a group and even as a solo artist she's always had Solange around and the effort and the media hype was not put behind Solange for a variety of reasons whether true or not I do believe I'm willing to take a limb out and say it was not a conspiracy theory uh, in terms of uh, them trying to do it to hype the tour they do enough things outside of this to draw attention to themselves anyway so you know 
I don't think that's the case with that. I'm willing to say that it's not a act to get promotion. Well, we're getting a couple of hits in social media. Our brother Jr. Who joins us here on Ain't No Has Stepping with Marcus J. It's good to have him uh, back in the fold, my brother. Uh, he is saying that he agrees with me that he wouldn't hit a woman. Uh, he do he does, however, reserve the right if they try to kill him. Um, which I mean, arguably, the way she went after him, you know, you can you can debate whether he felt that his life was in jeopardy the way she came at him. She came at him so violently. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't think any of us watching that video would say that he could not have handled her if he needed to, but she came at him pretty strong. So, Jay, I, I'm with you on that one. Said is continuing the way that they handled their other video. The video would have never made it out. Um, I would tend to agree with that, but I only will add one caveat that whoever the person is responsible for surveillance in the hotel that they was at ultimately is the person that was like, oh shit, this is Jay-Z and Beyonce and Solange, let's put this out there. That person has since been fired from their job, Um, so maybe they were, maybe they weren't part of the ruse that got us all involved, Tony. Oh, and that person got two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that video. So yeah, I would put it out there too. I don't care who you are. Yeah, well, I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know, the, I didn't know the number. Yeah, you know, but you, 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 the only thing is, if this, if their career is to be a surveillance watching, <laughs> they get no job nowhere else. So I hope that two hundred fifty is going to stretch for quite a while. Oh, but yeah, I mean, hold them for a minute. Yeah, you know, well, you know, have that with Marcus J. The only thing, the only, the last thing I'll say is, again. Don't put your hands on no ladies, fellas. You don't. But ladies, you need to know that you're going to get your ass whipped if you come at the wrong dude. Absolutely. It's just real talk. You're going to get your ass whipped if you come at the wrong dude. Vice and I said this before. I said this before. Ain't nobody swinging on Chris Brown and Mike Tyson. They're going to swing on Jay-Z. Ladies, y'all know the right dude to try. You might try Marcus J. You might try Mr. LP, right? But there's people in Legacy and their radio whose names will remain anonymous <laughs> that you know. need not That's try true. because it ain't going to work out well for you. That's it is true. what it is. Ain't no ass stepping with Marcus J. Jay Z. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jay-Z, 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 Jay-Z. JR <laughs> continues uh, he also didn't like uh, to see that so m- many people going at Jay if he had hit her he would have been like Ray Rice and we all remember the Ray Rice video when Ray Rice was seen dragging his lady out the elevator you know who knows what happened on the inside because we didn't see the inside of the video we saw him dragging her out the elevator maybe she punched him in his face kicked him in the nuts and folded him over and he finally said you know what enough is enough and he punched her right in the face knocked her out and when you saw him he was dragging her out the elevator we don't know that again i'm not justifying his physical assault on a lady but we don't know what we saw what what happened beforehand with the jay-z solange beyonce video we saw what we think is the full you know brunt of what actually happened that's a good point jay i'm glad you brought that up good to have you back and you know i have stepping with marcus j all right this next one I'm not even sure which one of the two of y'all I want when I want on this one first, man. For real, because when I read the story to y'all, y'all both going to give me the face like for real, yo. Um, Mr. LP, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to you on this one first. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna just read. I'm gonna just read the headline. Okay, you ready? All right, Houston stripper being sued. Customer wants his money back. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't yeah, don't don't just ponder the thought. Don't don't say nothing on that. I've one. seen that several times. You seen it? Okay, it's a Houston woman. Locations. She says that she's a stripper. She's being sued in small claims court by one of her customers. Her stage name is Nomi. Uh, she says that she works at a Houston strip club and admits that she went out a few times with one of her customers. Mistake number one. Uh, I've never heard of a customer suing a stripper, she said. I just don't understand how this person can sue me for money that he freely gave. I would never have even taken it had I known I had to pay it back. Uh, (laughs) The guy that's suing her, that customer, his name is Robert. Uh, Robert said that he wouldn't say much, but he confirms that he met Nomi in the strip club and says that she owes him about $3,000 worth of Harry Potter DVDs, a laptop, and cash, and he is suing to get it back. We started going on dates, going out to places, he said. I helped a little bit here and there with money here and there because she was staying with me for a while because we actually had a relationship. This guy's a nutcase, Nomi said. (laughs) 
<laughs> they're looking hopefully to have some sort of mediation gerald trees is an attorney and law professor at south texas college of law said it comes down to whether it was all gifts quote it has no really great legal value it was wow value and it all depends on whose facts the court believes. Otherwise, Robert may have to prove it was business transactions gone wrong. Assuming it's legal, then he might just be saying he didn't get what he bargained for. It's bizarre from a breach of warranty. End quote from the lawyer. Steven, Mr. LP, I'm not even going to ask you a direct question. I'm just going to get you to pontificate on this story here. What you think, my brother? Seen this situation several times over the years. Um, I hope not from the inside. No, not okay. from the inside. <laughs> not, the, not from the inside, no. Okay, um, good. There's nothing wrong. There's plenty of people who are who have married strippers and other things. Cause, and, and yes, the whole thing. Yes, not all of them stripping for college money. Whatever the be, may, being case may be. But... In this situation, he sounds like he's just trying to get use his knowledge of the law to try to cause trouble and gain attention for his cause. Basically, she get a got in a relationship. She probably didn't want to get involved anymore because you see, oh, he's an attitude a hole, whatever. Let me get on out of it, and she left with the money, the laptop, and whatever gifts. So he's like, no, I'm trying to be a pimp. You leave, you leave with what you came with, which was probably nothing. Or much and he wants it back so now he's just wanted to use the law to his advantage and try to go on whatever and if she was uh, and my thing is that you sometimes have to go on d maybe a little bit more longer dates or whatever and use a little bit more wisdom in terms of uh, I'm not saying she can't go out and even have move in with somebody but possibly see what's going on with this guy because chances are at stripper clubs you're not always going to get the most sane of people uh, sometimes not everybody who goes there is bad i'm not classifying that but it also leaves the door open for a lot more sane un insane people i should say excuse me tony what's your thoughts on this story you got the stripper that's being sued i don't know if i want to call him a john but i guess we should probably call him a john you know that's the term that we would use if it was a you know some sort of hooker type of relationship i mean I, I you know i don't want to disrespect her by calling her a hooker I, so i don't really know what to call robert here so we'll just call him robert um but robert is suing nomi because he don't feel that he got what he bargained for what do you think well and that was going to be my question was on what grounds are you suing her i mean that sounds like any other relationship you know when you're getting to know someone you know people do things for each other and just because it doesn't work out you don't ask for stuff back so is he saying that he loaned her money or that he let her borrow his harry potter dvds and she won't give them back i mean that's it's ridiculous he want his stuff he want his harry potter cds i mean he wants his harry he wants his harry potter cds so you know, think about me, that for a second. For me, what it comes down to is that the stripper doesn't want to be with you anymore, and you're mad. So, I mean, if you you gave her gifts, she was a stripper. You knew that. Like that's what they do is they do stuff for money. Not that she was a prostitute. Like I said, not not calling her a prostitute. Not calling him a John, but. I mean, maybe the the relationship, the uh, I guess the label wasn't clear to either him or her, which I have a feeling in this case that he wasn't clear on what it was, or he wanted or thought that it was th thought that it was going to be something that it really wasn't. But again, if you gave her these things, thinking y'all were like building this relationship and it just didn't work out. Then go away and find a new stripper. We getting a we getting a <laughs> go back. I tried to move on. I had a nice transition set up, Tony, and then you had to just go there. 804402-2893 is the number to dial. My brother Lumsy is listening to us. What's up, my brother? Lumsy said that she a hooker. And he is a fool. <laughs> and yes, he is a John Strippers or Shy Prostitutes. L O L. Which uh hey man, I, I don't I'm not sure that I disagree or agree with that. I think that that's a fair way to look at it. And you know, if if she's getting gifts, and she's not repaying those gifts, 
in his mind he feels like he should be getting something i mean i'm guessing she he, he didn't get what he thought and if he's dealing with it see i don't want to be disrespectful to her but if he's giving her stuff and he met her in a strip club as a stripper and he's giving her stuff and he feels like he needs to sue her what do we all think that he wasn't getting that he felt like he should have been getting well exactly which to me he's stupid because he's opening himself up to that because you know of course those that line of questioning is going to lead to were you intimate with him well yeah and the answer's probably going to be no that's why he's mad <laughs> exactly so basically you were mad because you paid for the services before you got them and you, you don't you do all of this and you ain't gonna give me none like exactly. really yeah so that's prostitution gone bad I guess. yeah which is right up there with what you said lumsy she is stripper and she's a shy prostitute you know like a payday advance that's oh cool. but Sorry. but no i'm with you because i hear i'm thinking tony Harry Potter CDs though for real? Yeah. Like who hooks for that? <laughs> you know she, did get I mean? a she got a laptop though. Yeah, so. She did get a laptop and some cash and you know, and maybe they was watching, you know, the interaction of Hermione and 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 and, and Harry for and real? they was getting it off. For real. She grew up to be pretty cute. Blank staring dead air. Okay, I got you. Ain't dot, dot, dot. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Ain't no ass that with Marcus J. She, I mean, she lacks a little melanin for my taste, but I got you. Ain't no ass that with Marcus J. 804-402-2893 is the number. The dial JR says, how are you trying to buy love in the strip club anyway? He should have knew because that's a voyeuristic type of atmosphere. You ain't going in to, to try to find love. And, you know, if you do, I mean, I, I guess the, you know, the pocket protector guys go in there for that. I don't see no picture of Robert or Nomi. My guess is he's a plaid shirt, pocket protector type of dude, suspended wearing, you know, bookworm type of dude. Maybe so. Maybe he's a stud. Like, who knows? But I agree with you, JR. Who's going up in there? Beer and boobs then cut the deck. <laughs> this is what JR just said. <laughs> That's what he said. Yeah, you, you got me. You got to be going crazy. You got to be going crazy and whatnot. It don't have step with Marcus J. All right, listen. We got one more that we gonna get to before we move on and take our first break of the night. I want to uh, before I do that, I'm gonna introduce the guest that just walked in the door. Every time this guest comes in here, she get mad at me for throwing her right in the fire, but I'm gonna do it anyway. We got the first lady of Legacy Internet Radio, the co-host of the Green Room Version 2.0 with Jay Grizzly. We got the woman herself, comedian that's Lisa P. Just walked in the building. Oh, ain't no half stepping with Marcus, J, and Tony, and Steven. Hey, guys. Hey, family. What's happening? Lisa P. Oh, my shirt is tight. I just got it from Walmart. And I think I got it from the junior section. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see? Look at this. This is supposed to be a double X. It don't look tight. That's yeah. fine. See, it didn't say genius. That's what I thought it was. But yeah, hey, What's thanks happening? for having me. Appreciate it. No doubt, we appreciate having you here. I'm gonna throw you right in the fire. I'm gonna throw you right in the fire. This next story we're gonna do. We gonna talk. I'm getting this one from Think Progress. It's about the teen girl who got kicked out of the prom because her dress wouldn't lead boys to quote. Think impure thoughts. Come on. She gets kicked out of the prom. Now, I'm showing the crew the picture, uh, and I'm going to get to the story here in just a minute, Mr. LP. I want Lisa P on this one first. But if you look at the photo, Lisa, you can see the dress. I've seen it. You, you've seen it. Okay. And I think a lot of us, because we're all generally within the same age range, within a few years of each Psych. other, uh, general, generally. Um, and so we all remember yes you are the baby in the room but we <laughs> you had to put that out there right but we all remember the the fingertip test mm -hmm. you know what I mean like if your dress is shorter than the length I mean unless you got monkey arms we, we want you to <laughs> that would be me, yes. <laughs> you got monkey arms unless you got monkey arms you know you you know you want your dress to be a little bit longer at least than your arms now this is a 15 year old girl this is right Se 17 i'm sorry 17 year old girl she's right here from virginia she's homeschooled by the way and was going to the prom of the because you know the homeschool kids have schools that they kind of have to be affiliated with even though they don't go there but basically the 
parental chaperones there were worried that she was inspiring quote impure thoughts end quote among the boys in attendance even though her dress adhered to the fingertip length dress code requirement she was still asked to leave and y'all can hear those picture snaps mr lp in here making sure that we all look fly and when you see these pictures come up on the uh, the facebook page and legacy and everything you gotta be sorry man this is what we do man i'm, I'm well, glad that's the roll shots of mine that i said i need for you to do from the chin up brother <laughs> put the chin up you yeah, just get my toes that and an airbrush you just get my toes and and oh, just get them toes Lord. instead of Lord. don't even get that well, get my fur, the fake pearl bracelet if you want to. Anyway, y'all, <laughs> you don't want you don't want nobody to see y'all. Y'all fly, y'all fine. Whatever, fly. Away. And he's really taking pictures of their feet. Yeah, well, don't don't do don't do that. It, see, I didn't ask you to, see. Why would you do this? See, that's how that's how you get is, in trouble. This is how this is how he does, Mr. LP. Anyway, Claire is her name. Uh, she's five foot nine, and even though the hem on her dress was within the guidelines, she says her long legs led some chaperones to assume that she was breaking the dress code. After Claire and her friends hung out a little bit on the dance floor, uh, they was just swaying with the music and talking, enjoying themselves. And quote, she was pulled away by one of the organizers and told that some of the fathers uh, chaperoning the event had complained about her. They reportedly said that her dancing was too provocative and she was going to cause the young men at the prom to think impure. Th There's more to this. I, I don't want to read no more because I'm, I'm I'm freaking getting annoyed just reading this bullshit. Listen, can you jump in here and calm me down? Because because I'm about to say something really yeah, crazy. Let me, let me, let me help yeah. you, brother. Yeah. Um, I, I actually read this story as well, and I heard she say, you know, it's not her fault that these basically perverted fathers were watching her like that. Um, also, I guess, I'm pretty sure she was probably twerking. And, you know, if you're homeschooled, you're trying to keep your kids from out of the twerking society. <laughs> so if she brought it to the prom for the homeschoolers, I'm pretty sure it was like, each of the homes got together or you know whoever they turned you know like a little <laughs> i mean not like that you know what i'm Our saying street. but they all got together yeah right on the street um and so they probably weren't used to that so i'm pretty sure it was probably more of the twerking in the dress that made it rise above the three inch mark that got them then really it was the dress Probably it's just her dancing. No, I got you, I, and I'm, I'm with you on that one. Ain't no has to have Marcus J. Joy is saying, "What's up to everybody?" I think she's saying Hi, peace to you, Lisa P, because you just walked in the door. And she's also saying, "What the hell?" I got a special, 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 special shout out to our sister Michelle K. Uh, Michelle K is listening to us on the Mix LR right now. But the reason why I want to give a special shout out to Michelle K is because she popped in. And came and said peace to me and Mr. LP during the before we came and went live. And, you know, just one of our uh, one of our longtime listeners. And she wanted to come in and say hey to everybody. So this is how we do here Legacy in that radio. If you're in the neighborhood, you want to come in and say, hey, we might even ask you to hang around like we asked her. But she had to get on the road. And so she couldn't stay with us. But special thank you to Michelle. Y'all longtime listeners know we shout her out every week because and, she listens to every mom. show. And her mom was here with us. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, they were here. Alyssa P., we know that she listens to your show with Grizzy every week, Mr. Yes. LP. And I have something to say about that. And, Michelle, I hope your mommy is listening when I say this. I am very Upset and should I just say jealous that you came back to see Marcus J and Steven? But you did not come and see myself and Jay Grizzy, but the English correct way, Grizzy and myself. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm sorry, Marcus uh, It's all right. As I wipe my tears. Okay. She's she really is crying, Michelle. But you know what? Exactly. We're we're definitely glad Tony's wiping her back, so hopefully she'll get it together here. And Tony wipes my back. Did, did, did you hear did you hear my, yeah. he wipes padding, That's wiping. Bad. It's the same padding, thing. Yeah, it it's is. the same thing. My brother Lumsey is listening. Uh it's, he's still with us and he said Tony, she made one of the male teachers get it woody is all that that was. That's what you think? All, okay, so this girl is homeschool, which means nobody's probably seen her. She comes in, she's five nine. I wish I was five nine. So you got this tall glass of water comes in with this sparkly dress and she's in there and she's moving and grooving. All the boys asking about her. All the dads looking at her, the teachers, and these women are like, Ugh, who is that? No, she didn't. So that's why they got mad. That dress looks fine to me. But again, if she was maybe twerking it or, 
even grinding a little bit, then yeah, the dress may have come up a little bit, but that was just jealousy and those nasty grown men couldn't handle it and knowing they had to go to home to their old out of shape. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you know, it, it it is what it is. I'm gonna have a comment on this one before we get out of this segment. Mr. LP, what you got, brother? Severe, extreme foolishness and hate. That's all it was. And uh, granted, we weren't there seeing the woman dance, but regardless, it's just a hate because it was somebody on the outside and nobody knew who she was and did not know her parents or whatever. So they just want to give hate and what have you and pure thoughts. They know that child wanna, was supposed to be uh, learning uh, twerking uh, while uh, she's uh, supposed uh, to be homeschooling. Well, true, but then at the, she she got the advantage of learning and watching. Fans, sure. Well, she can watch phone. YouTube videos when why the others had to go to class. That's the only thing. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they probably ain't seen her since she was in like second or third uh, grade. Much like who you? It in. The, the only problem with it is just that uh, it's just lack of communication and effort. If, if it's that much of a concern, then you know what? All these schools, whether private or not, sit there and make everybody take a picture of a dress. There's worse things out there that we've all seen. And this is no way near offensive compared to because every year we get the emails alerts of worst prom dresses, either hood or scantily clad or whatever. We've seen string bikini stuff is loud in palms. We shouldn't, but then we get this. So at least she's covered. Even then, there's some stuff. So it's like there's people dress me up. Would they they do that? And they wear flowers. There's people come to hold, and it's normal. So just people just don't understand that. There's different ways of life even here in the U.S. Everybody don't live the same way in different areas of the country. There's things here that are unique in Virginia that's different than Texas. In Florida, you buy the drumsticks. I mean, like, here, give me a break. I can dig it. Here's what I'll say about it. Uh, uh, Lumsy, <laughs> you nailed it, bro. She basically got the wrong father riled up and aroused. And then Tony added on, you got the wrong mama that was up in there hating. And because I seen the dress, the dress is not that serious, y'all. If you want to see it, just go on on my Facebook page and you can see it. The dress is not that serious. Her hand goes right to the bottom of the dress. So even though she, if you want to argue, if she was dancing, the dress came up. And she's standing straight up. The dress and her fingers line right up. The dress is not inappropriate as far as size. It might be super tight. The dress doesn't speak to what her shape is. Um, But I don't even know that that matters. I think that you ended up with the wrong people in there that was hating. They probably never seen her before. It was a whole lot of jealousy. And here's the thing that no one brought up that I want to bring up. I want one of the ladies to jump in here. Are we really going to penalize a woman, a woman child, a female, a young woman for the arousal of a male? What kind of precedent are we setting that we're punishing the girl because the boy got a, got excited i mean like i mean how fair is that are we already setting these kids up to think that the way they dress is going to be okay for them to have misbehavior are we going to say that when these kids go to college if she's wearing that same dress and some boy because he did he because he he liked what she was wearing too much got over excited and he assaulted her that he's justified because of how she was dressed are we suggesting that um, I know that, well, in my opinion, I, th- I think we are because working in corporate America, there are certain wardrobe guideline- guidelines that you have to adhere to. And of course, the list for women is much longer than it is for men. Um, and that's because not nothing at all against my brothers, but the physical aspect is more attractive. Yeah, I mean, I men, men are more physical creatures, so it doesn't take much. I mean, you can tell a shapely woman if she has on a nice business suit. So, yeah, I, th- I think that they started young. No, she shouldn't be penalized, but we do. Society, at least here in America, we do penalize um, our, our females, our girls, our females, our women, um, because of 
the inability of some males to control their physical reaction. But that's just a level of the fact that obviously we have more men in law and make the rules than we have women mm -hmm. and to make some things like that. That's just like, and, and look at the psychology that you're setting up. We already have me taking pictures or around. We see so many women, don't put me in front of the camera. I'm scared. Or don't want to be in front of it because of how we're not encouraging just to love and be yourself. Here's an example that we can't do our women. <laughs> It's like that because of foolishness like this. And so you messing up is possibly, she's cool now, but do we really know what's going on inside of her? But I feel like, again, in the article, she does make the point, and the reason why she took the picture is she said, it's not my fault that, you know, they're perverted or whatever the article may have said. But so I feel like that she's been set good morals and values at home. So her parents have taught her well. So, again, it always starts from home. Right. And then, of course, you know, just like in society now where you have the bullying and trying to keep up with the Joneses, you know, from the little ones to the adults. So, again, it's all about the upbringing, your mindset. And you know what you're around, right. but in in a whole in a society, yes, we do penalize each other. But her as a person, of course, she shouldn't have been held responsible. Maybe something should have been said to her parents, but I guess her being sent home was something being said to her parents. No, but, I can dig that. And of course, again, she's homeschooled, so they're figuring they don't see that that stuff. And they probably well, just. I, I think they. I think that they just was blown away because it was her right. had they been used to her had she come to school every day dressed how she normally dressed they would have been used to it from her and they would have maybe potentially reacted differently Lumsey says that they was ashamed uh for one of the fathers because he shouldn't have been excited over underage underage girl and they blamed her for it i think you might be on to something there Lumsey. um you know you may be saying it in some kind of a tongue-in-cheek way but i really honestly think that you may be onto something uh, on that one. Tanya is hitting us up on social media. Boys in pure thoughts, uh, whether she was in full body armor, they would still had them thoughts. Now, I believe in dress code, but I think it was unfair her to dress short. Uh, but someone else wore a staples dress, and that would require no, blo no bra. And we're going to teach dress code, then let's cover from soup, <laughs> soup to nuts. Okay. Uh, and most certainly, girls do not control the thoughts of boys or men or other females, for that matter. I'm just saying. Uh, Chandra is saying, yeah, that's pretty stupid. Uh, the fingertip rule, damn, she's old. I can't imagine letting my child go out in a dress anywhere near that short, and that's acceptable standard. Damn, I guess people going out in pajamas is the least of her concern. So I, that kind of irks me too, Chandra. So I, I, I appreciate that one. Ain't no ass stepping with Marcus J. Thank y'all, everybody, for being a part of that segment. We're going to take our very first break of the night and when we come back, we're going to ask some more what the hell questions. Is affluenza back, y'all? A man does not go to jail with his seventh DUI? Is affluenza back? And also are we finding people for feeding the homeless? What's up with banning sex toys? Mm. Yeah, Ooh. we got a lot to get into. That's the next what segment. The Marcus J. Mr. LP, Miss Tony, and the First Lady of Legacy Internet Radio, and y'all on our social media. Ain't no ass that with Marcus J. Live from the Daniel Legacy Internet Radio. We shall be back in a minute. <laughs> 